All right. Can hazardous <laughs> L train see. come back? Azur, Azur with the offense right now. He knows. He wants oh, this man. tournament. He wants this tournament. First not looking too happy. Oh, he hits a button. Big damage. Oh my oh. goodness. Can we see can we get seven Perfect. golden letters? Seven golden letters. Seven golden letters. Seven golden letters. Seven, seven golden, golden letters. letters. That's it. Ah! Azure takes Michigan Masters 2018. That's Hey guys, I'm The Philosopher. I am a life coach and also a competitive gamer that's into the world of personal development. And I'm trying to help you guys level up inside and outside the virtual arena. Uh, today, I have a guest that I actually met in person over at Michigan Massacre, Michigan Massacres, <laughs> Michigan Masters. Uh, he is the Tekken, uh, I guess, uh, winner, Tekken champion for Michigan Masters of 2018. Um, his name is Azure, hopefully I'm saying that properly. But uh, yeah, I had the chance to talk to him. And one of the coolest things that makes me happy is that he's a lucky Chloe player. Uh, so someone who plays a character that seems to be low tier, but uh, still wind up beating a lot of good players along the way. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the first obvious question just uh, is, is how, did, how did it feel winning this tournament? <laughs> um, well, you know, I've kind of been uh, bouncing in the local scene for a little bit. Um, actually, hasn't been that long. Um, I pretty much started when Tekken Seven pretty much uh, hit shelves. Uh, so, and then I actually hadn't really won as far as from a local standpoint in a little bit. So it was kind of good just sort of to to get that off of my back as well. Um, you know, just kind of from a personal standpoint of of you know showing I still got it. You know, I can still. Uh, I could still hang with the rest. And it was also nice just, you know, overall to get um, just individuals from uh, different states out. You know, it was actually a, uh, not my first regional, but uh, certainly one that um, I remember. It's the, the first win I've sort of had outside of that local scene. So feels good. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you've been playing Tekken since, since it came out. Um, I guess, how did you get introduced into fighting games? Ooh, boy. Um, that, uh, yeah, that question goes way back into yesteryear. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I've always enjoyed, uh, fighting games, uh, just kind of grew up playing them with my family. Um, most notably my, my older brothers were pretty much into it for the vast majority of, uh, their lives. So, you know, here's young me at, uh, five, six, you know, years old, really getting into, to Virtual Fighter 2 and the original Tekken and, you know, just kind of just mm. stuck with it and ran with it and it's, always been my favorite genre of games so and more than likely always will be yeah what uh what do you think pulls you towards towards fighting games mm, um i guess the challenge more so i've i've actually have always liked any type of game or competition i, I treat lots of things like a competition um, and I kind of liked how uh, fighting games always kind of had this uh, this extreme chess factor to it a little bit. Um, so, that, and I think that's kind of where I draw a lot of the the lore for fighting games, the strategy behind them, but then also the the practice it takes to become knowledgeable in just certain situations. So, it, the challenge mostly it's it's the one thing I think that kind of keeps things ticking for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like uh, a lot of times I consider fighting games to be like high speed chess uh, because there is that element of knowing the rules and being able to manip manipulate that. But also the fact that there's a human element that you're facing somebody else and having to actually uh, study their moves, study what they're going to do and, and have some good predictions uh, or countermeasures for, for the actions that they take. So it's very interesting and it's e even more interesting seeing it uh, in different fighting games because I'm not very well versed in, in Tekken right now. Um, but like just from the things I know from other fighting games, it's really fascinating to see that and uh, to see the the craziness that ensues in games that I'm not as familiar with. What do you think? Like, like what is your process for for learning uh, fighting games, specifically Tekken? I think I approach most fighting games the same way. Um, I'm an individual that uh, I like to see and study what others have uh, really picked up on a game first. Um, so one of the first things I really do is uh, hit the you know hit boards, hit pretty much online in terms of uh, of resources that I might find, uh, uh, character data, you know, all that type of knowledge, uh, combos that uh, you know somebody may have already thought of, 
Um, really, I'm not an individual that likes to try to think of all of these things, to, you know, by myself at first. So that's, I think that's kind of where I get my, uh, my edge to be able to pick up on things quickly. Um, I'm more of a studier. And then at that point, once I've gathered all the data that uh, others have kind of gathered, I, I kind of take it, think outside the box a little bit, see if I can put my, you know, my own spin and, and, and uh, knowledge towards kind of taking that to the next level. So that's, it's more or less how I approach most fighters. Hmm. Uh, kind of interesting question that just popped into my head is, is how do you remember, or like what, what's your, your process or, or how do you remember a lot of the information that you're in taking? Like, how do you, you see all this stuff, you, you understand it, you learn it, and then you, you take it to the lab, whatever, like what's your process for being able to keep all this in your brain? Oh, yes. Um, you know, repetition for the most part. Uh, I think there's a, a practical way of approaching, uh, certain, um, I guess, practice sessions, so to speak. And then there's sort of an impractical way. Um, I, in all honesty, I kind of like to make games within games, if that makes sense. So <laughs> just even kind of approaching um, Tekken, for instance, um, you know, if it's a certain move that I'm really trying to, you know, nab and understand its animation. So, you know, whenever I see this move, I know I can punish it with move X or move Y. Um, you know, I might play a little game. I might... Uh, throw um, in the training session or in practice um, a few moves that aren't that move, maybe try to set that to a low priority and pretty much train myself to, you know, uh, as soon as I see that particular animation to, to act appropriately. Um, so just kind of keeping things, you know, fresh and from that particular standpoint. Um, and I think I treat most fighting games the, the same way. Uh, the more I can make it's fun to learn the more I learn and the more I can kind of keep things, uh, keep things fresh. Hmm. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? When, when you say a game within a game, I know you just kind of elaborate a little bit, but like, what's, what's the process with that? Oh yeah. So, uh, so for instance, um, just to kind of give a few other ideas, um, you know, essentially have fun, have fun training. So if it's something like, uh, uh, making like flashcards, for instance, outside of uh, outside of work and outside of my play, um, just kind of you know studying frame data, or uh, even in the practice sessions themselves, uh, you know just kind of uh, randomizing moves and patterns uh, of of an opponent or a training dummy to see if I can act appropriately. Uh, those are the biggest things. Um, even in terms of uh, character knowledge, if if it's something I don't know, just kind of testing myself by going into the boards and 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 you know trying to study essentially study what's what's out there uh, as far as knowledge and kind of come back to it later. So um, I'm an individual. I take a lot of notes. So in a sense, I treat my play a little bit like I would treat learning any other item. But at the same time, you know, it's a game, so try to keep things a little fresh in terms of, of, uh, you know, how I approach it. And hopefully that kind of gives a little more of an idea. That's a good question though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I, I appreciate the analogy too. Um, or the explanation that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a lot of people, I think I hear this a lot too, is that training isn't fun. I made a whole, uh, video about, about that whole topic, but, um, yeah, it's interesting that you found your own process for making uh, making a game within a game. That's really cool. I think a lot of people can actually learn about that. Do you actually like? Uh, do you talk about this process pretty often with people? Um, somewhat. I, it sort of when it comes up, because uh, I think you're mm -hmm. right. You know, I think that's the big thing when uh, when sort of asked the same question. It's just well, you know, it's not it's not as fun to not play matches, and for me. I got my approach. I'm like, actually, it's exactly the same amount of fun. <laughs> actually, it may be more fun in some instances um, because, you know, it's just trying to become a fan of the learning process, I think, is is the biggest hurdle for most. And, you know, if you can put your own twist on it, kind of make it interesting for you, then, yeah, that's that's when things really start to click. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Uh, something really interesting that's that's worth knowing is that a lot of uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I follow, like maybe you know Gary Vaynerchuk or, or something along those lines, uh, they they talk about enjoying the process of of learning more than the actual like 
you know, the work you do behind the scenes, you know, technically it'd be the training mode for, for fighting game players. Uh, but that work is, well, one, more important, but also uh, needs to be more enticing because that's where you're going to spend most of your time. You know, it's probably like, you know, the 80-20 rule, 80% or 20% of your rule, your work makes 80% of the results. And, um, you know, I think the training mode is in, in learning, just in general, like finding a learning process is where most of your time is at. And then when you go to a tournament, that's like a small percentage of, of like the overall work that you've actually put in for sure. Uh, so it's, it's really important for people to, to find a way to, to enjoy a learning process, and make it to where it's continual and doesn't get stale. And you're always continually training yourself. That's really, a uh, it's really useful. I think, um, the more we see that in the FGC, the more we're going to see better players getting better faster um because um and, and let me know your opinion on this but i definitely think there's an efficient way to learn and there's also an inefficient way to learn like you can be in training mode uh, for hours and not really get much done versus like being in there for 15 minutes and, and getting more out of that than those two hours oh 100 percent um and it actually kind of ties back a little bit into um i guess structuring training sessions for me is kind of a big thing especially you know as you um as you kind of plateau to that stage of you know here's uh real life versus your challenges as a gamer you know your time becomes finite uh so then your time is finite so you essentially want to uh try to maximize your training sessions as much as possible um i think it kind of goes back to um one of the examples i give um i have kind of trained some individuals before um just sort of given them mentoring and have always sort of pointed them to, you know, to YouTube resources or uh, online resources. And then I find out, you know, a few days later, um, they might show me, um, you know, a fantastic tech or something that they may have figured out or a, a cool combo. And then I kind of scour, you know, my my resources of what I have and and I figure out, oh, I've seen this before. In fact, I've given you this this a video with the same information, you know, so it's something that you've discovered, but with a bit of research, someone else has already discovered that for you and sort of saved the time of the discovery process so that, you know, you can put that towards other stuff. Um, I think that's that's probably the big thing. Um, you know, gather that, that type of data first um, and kind of go, go with it from there. Um, there's so many resources online, look them up. So as far as movement, for instance, uh, just kind of applying things back to Tekken, uh, you know, there's there's ways to practice that uh you know there's there's with punishment guides everywhere for your character versus another character try to find that first before you you know take that take those several hours kind of going through the command list between characters and practicing it that way so yeah this time time is everything <laughs> pretty much that's moral of the story yeah in in structuring that time as well um, uh, it's something that I don't see a lot of people uh, that I've come across really talking about, uh, and it's always been really fascinating. Like for me, I had to learn about goal setting and structuring your time and structuring your day and stuff like that. And uh, while I, I have a limited amount that I, I can put towards fighting games, I have more so lately been trying to to do that for myself. Uh, but also noticing that a lot of other players kind of um, maybe some inherently do it and don't realize it, but a lot of people that are kind of on my level or or not getting better tend to just play rank mode or um, when they're training, they don't have any sort of regimen. And it's really fascinating because I have a background in martial arts and I, I think about this a lot whenever I want to train and I feel like I'm not training effectively is that uh, everything that you learn in martial arts from your sensei is kind of a, uh, it complements something else. Like you learn how to throw a punch by itself because you want to get good execution or good form. Uh, you learn your stances and your movements and isolations and then you learn combinations and you learn how those combinations actually uh, tie into something useful. And uh, your, your training in martial arts is, is done in a way so that you're, you're learning these things individually and effectively, but also that they complement other moves, but also in a way so that it becomes muscle memory. Uh, like your, your punch becomes a muscle memory. So when you're learning a combination, you don't have to worry about relearning how to, how to perform that punch in a proper way because it's already there. And so all the movements and everything, when you do it in unison, um, it, it's, it's a very effective way of learning. And I find that like martial uh, fighting games, a lot of times it's uh, not, it, it can be the same. And uh, a lot of people who have like training methods kind of do do it that same sort of way. You know, you learn how to do individual things. You learn your combos. You learn like the ranges of your buttons. Um, you learn how it can tie into your combos. And, and like 
after a while, you know, and, and I use music, I've talked about this before, where, you know, you learn how to make music or any other kind of art. Uh, once you get that execution side down, you're able to kind of um, manipulate the meta, so to speak. I think James or, or Justin Wong talked about this too. But like the more you learn the rules of the game and your execution is good enough to like your proficiency and, and your competency are two different things. And so like a commentator has a good uh, competency, but not a good proficiency because they spend more time watching than playing. And so when you have like the, the, the balance of the two, you can kind of create your own rules or, or manipulate the rules as you go. Um, but it starts with like balancing that knowledge with with the practice and actually having some sort of um, uh, uh, method to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, as far as uh, training regimen, that actually is is important. And this is actually uh, something that I get asked about quite a bit. Um, I'm someone that, in particular, just kind of bringing it back to Tekken, um, one of the hardest things to keep consistent with is uh, movement and backdashing. You know, um, you could play for an extended period of time. And, you know, after a while, you know, your, uh, your hands warm up and you've kind of been at it for a little bit. And, you know, you're looking like JDCR as far as <laughs> movement and e execution. But, uh, you know, those first 15 minutes uh, when you first fire the game up the next day can be rough. Uh, and it's like that for, I feel like that must be a challenge for a lot of individuals. It, it, it is for myself. Um, so this is something like that I did start and I realized I became a better player um, before, like even I, I delved online into any matches, I would usually spend about 15 minutes just sort of backdashing, doing a couple of uh, B and B's and kind of starting there uh, because I found I wasn't dropping those, you know, in my first few games you know, as soon as I was able to practice that first instead of just hopping right into games. So that's, a, that's an interesting point, you know, as far as a regimen that's, um, I think that's something that made me better, um, infinitely better as soon as I, I realized that, yeah, I should maybe take a few minutes and make an actual routine of things before I started playing. It's interesting in a sense that, like, you know, even, even at your level of gameplay, it's still important to warm up. Uh, it's still important to kind of, you know, get get that uh um uh get yourself like your execution in your mind ready to actually perform at peak level. Yeah. Uh, uh I'm curious to know um like what's what's the number one thing that you always uh practice whenever like before you go to a tournament or or do like some sort of a match. Oh, uh, for me, uh and actually it's funny, it just kind of Talking about it, backdashing. Uh, that's that's crazy. Uh, movement in Tekken is really difficult to do consistently uh, for me. I've I'm actually um, I, I play Tekken generally with a pad, but I you know historically have played every other fighting game with an arcade stick, and I I kind of you know weigh the um, sort of how it feels to place all that type of input you know as far as stick versus pad and kind of thought well pad is better um but kind of what i have found in playing is just just instances where you know no matter how much you've played uh say you come from outside in 30 degree weather because you know this is pad warrior stories by the way um and your thumbs are numb you can't feel anything so it's like oh am i actually hitting uh directions no i don't know I have no idea. And so there's always a warm up process for, for that for me um, at any stage of, of playing. So usually one of the first things, just that. In fact, actually, I, I think when I met you, I think the entire time I was talking to you, I was I was practicing backdashing on the controller I had. So just kind of putting things in perspective. Uh, it's never a dull moment uh, for me in, in movement and tech. And it's so crucial and so important. That's funny because I remember, like, even during the match, like, you were watching some of the matches at the top eight, and you were just sitting there on your controller, just like, you were, I didn't know what you were doing, <laughs> but I knew you were doing something, and I was like, is he, like, I wasn't sure if you were pretending you were in the match or just practicing something specific, uh, so it's funny you bring that up because, yeah, I did notice that, and I was curious about that, so I'm, I'm glad that you, you brought that up, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yep, that's, that's a routine for me, um, in between matches, 100% of the time. Cool. Oh, that's that's 
really good to know. Um, that makes me want to use that uh, for myself. Mobility has always been a big issue for me. And um, I, I was playing, playing Tekken yesterday. There's a, a local FGC at Glitch Gaming that I go to. And um, I, I remember the input for the Korean backdash. Like, I, I understand how it works because I used to do animations and, and game design for fighting games. Uh, but, like, um, I found that it was actually easier on a pad. Um, like, I haven't, I have historically an issue with backdashing on just a regular stick, unless it's like Marvel where I can press two buttons. Like, it's just, it just mm. feels super awkward from either side. And so, like, using a D pad, it was a lot easier. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is why you do the Korean backdash. I was like, just messing with it and learning it and uh, learning a little Lucky Chloe stuff just because she's, she's Lucky Chloe. She's cool. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that brings me to my next question, though, is, um, uh, one of the things I really want to talk about is this perception of of low tier characters and like how other people uh, behave accordingly. Um, I have some like follow up questions for, it, but I want to know just like your initial thoughts with like you playing Lucky Chloe and she being perceived as a, a low tier uh, character. What's what's your thought on that? Mm. Um, well, if we're just talking in terms of uh, objectively speaking on the character, you know, I there's video games in general, fighting games in general. There's there's no perfect balance. Um, and it, it just so happens, though, that I feel like Tekken is the type of game in which, you know, the system sort of uh, substantiates a balance that other fighters may not have. You know, it's it's a lot of uh, movement, a lot of mind games and meta that's involved. And essentially, you're nabbing one good hit, and that one good hit could be, you know, 60% of someone's health. So when we're talking about that, it's it's a lot of of more of the mind games and understanding the system that sort of brings or makes a great Tekken player um, more than it is really the character itself. Not to say that the character can can bring you some um, immediate success and and grave success, you know. But for me, ultimately. I'm not a really big fan into playing the tier game. Um, you know, objectively speaking, I feel like Lucky Chloe definitely lacks, you know, moves and tools that other characters have, but that should never stop you from playing a character that you enjoy playing. That's that's first and foremost. Um, I'm always an individual where if I can't have fun with a character, then, well, I, I can't have fun with the game. So just kind of starting from that, you know, I instantly found her super appealing and and then, you know, the, oh, she's bad conversations came afterwards. And I, I sort of shrugged my shoulders and said, oh, oh well, I'm just going to be bad with the character then because the character's fun. <laughs> so that's kind of my take with it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, there's, there's always a debate of like high tier, low tier, and then it always shuffling around dur during updates. And then again, I play Street Fighter, so it's a little bit different. And, and I saw a lot of people talking about Kami. Um, I don't know if you keep up with Street Fighter at all. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, interesting enough to me, I don't feel like that character is a, a super strong character. But um, yeah, I, personally, I feel like there's always a way, unless the game is like broken in some really bad way or the character is pur purposely made to be bad, like uh, Dan uh, from Street Fighter 4 or, or <laughs> backwards. Even he's won some stuff too, though. But like, um, the game is always growing. The players are always learning. Um, in my opinion, I feel like it's it's a, a bold statement to say that somebody somebody is probably not going to win if they pick this character. Like they've doomed themselves to to lose. Um, it, it I, I I don't know how much you know about like personal development, but there's like a, a mindset that people have, um, and, and there's like these these different terms that I kind of want to throw out. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. Um, just like coaching terms that I've learned and. Uh, one of them is is like a, a fixed mindset. Um, I talk about it a lot. That's just the best term that I can think of where a lot of players have a certain perception that's just like how they are, you know, and a lot of times these are, these are the same players that you hear complaining when they lose and they'll make excuses. Uh, they have this mindset that like this is the way the world works and like they can't get around that. And these are usually the, the people that'll play a, a character, but will switch because they're being told that that character is not good and they're not going to win. Um, so it's I'm trying to I'm trying to get around to the to the question of the matter though is like when when people are feeling pressured to switch from one character or another when it's not like when it's not uh just purposely for fun it's more so for for winning uh, uh what do you think of someone actually switching 
uh, on based on someone else's perception rather than their own perception of the character. Mm. That's a that's a good question. I think that ultimately, um, the way characters in fighting games seem to work, um, everyone has their uh, their nuances in terms of uh, their play style, uh, what they like, what they don't like out of specific characters. And, you know, over time, you sort of develop a proficiency, you know, based on on the type of character. Uh, for instance, um, I always liked Chloe because I like characters that um, have a lot of setups and shenanigans. Yes, I'm one of those individuals. Um, and I think that she has a lot of that. You know, she, she substantiates uh, um, a lot of uh, poor pressure in terms of certain situations. But all I really need to do is get that one good hit and you're you're knocked out so that's sort of <laughs> my kind of concept of why i enjoy the character so much and and i love characters that play um uh, similar to that um I, I delved a little bit into uh, uh karine and uh, street fighter 5 she's a lot stronger but she uh as far as you know even just kind of talking in season one just kind of bringing it back in street fighter um she had a lot of uh of interesting setups and 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 shenanigans particularly on the wall that you know i found were really interesting and that's that's kind of what i like out of a character i like setups i like making people you know making people scalps bleed um that's kind <laughs> of really what i enjoy so i guess kind of tying it all back um you know you should play essentially who best suits your character style and as far as switching for it, you know, if you have the mindset between different, you know, uh, styles of character, you know, more power to you if you see that the tools are are in your favor. But ultimately, for you know the followers of that that may not have that type of knowledge or proficiency between character types, you know, honestly, I feel like a lot of players give up on characters far too quickly, or they, you know, they let the uh, the hype or lack of hype sort of you know dictate the, the the choices that they make and the characters they they select um and the developers it's kind of the same way i think one of the things just kind of tying it in the tech end that i've always enjoyed and namco games in general actually so caliber is one of them as well um for better or worse there's generally not very many substantial updates to their games um they may roll out with one update and that's kind of what you get you know and I think in doing that, it kind of forces the players to you know, learn more about their character and delve deeper into the character itself rather than, you know, um, play plateau and then uh, get that mindset of, oh, well, you know, my character is going to get buffed in two months anyway. Um, that's I don't feel like that's the right mindset. So hopefully that kind of answers a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of follow up questions. Um one is what's what's your definition of of shenanigans oh yes good good um so i feel like uh something that maybe and that's actually that's a great question something that's that's really difficult to uh to deal with at first glance or i guess something that you uh may be able to thrive with because of lack of character knowledge from the opponent side so that's for me for instance um, I enjoy Lucky Chloe not only because of the fact that, you know, she takes a lot of damage and she hits like a truck, um, but also the fact that she she requires a lot of training in order to defend properly. Um, and so it also helps me, in, you know, think of of unique ways of, of trying to fool the opponent into thinking, OK, you know, um, I have advantage here or I can throw out this button. Um, and so, like, for instance, her Cali roll that she does out of back turn is probably one of my favorite moves um, because of the fact that it, it crushes high and mid. And so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of training and uh, discipline that kind of has to be done from the opponent side, um, not to hit buttons that would generally work in scenarios that um, that other characters can put themselves in that are similar. Um, you know, I, I like characters that you're able to practice and and you have to learn how to defend as a character rather than the system itself maybe it kind of gives a little bit of an idea but um might be a little still vague there no yeah because 
something that I find it, it's important for me as a, as a coach, I have to understand because people have different definitions of the same word. And that's something that I learned very early on. And I see a lot of terms thrown around in the FGC, like, like shenanigans, and people have def different definitions of what that word means. Uh, and sometimes there's a, a certain level of respect that comes with that word, depending on the person. So it's really it's really interesting. Like some people respect shenanigans. Some people think it's like beneath them or beneath anyone that, that does it. And it's really interesting to see that that like emotional connection to these words and, and like also an intellectual uh, definition of those words, depending on who you're talking to. So that's uh, that's why I had to ask. Um, the other thing that you touched on was uh, plateauing in. Um, it's really interesting because yeah, in Street Fighter it gets it gets patched fairly regularly, and and something that I see uh, more so in a mentality than a skill set is is plateauing a lot. And uh, there's a term called the the OK plateau. Uh, and if you think about like driving or anything that you do every day, uh, you get just good enough. To, you know, if if you're at a job, you you work just good enough, or you learn your skills just good enough to not get fired for the most part, or you drive to get from point A to point B. Uh, which is weird, you know, if you think about it, because you put tons of time into driving. Why aren't why aren't we all like race car level drivers after like 10 years of True. driving? You know, it's because we get this certain mindset where it's like, OK, I'm good enough. And you you, you switch to your autopilot. You know, you, you see this a lot in fighting games, but I think it happens on different levels for, for different people. Um, and uh, that's um, one that does happen in, in Street Fighter. I find a lot of other fighting games because. Um, they have these mental blocks between like, oh, this character is strong and going back to like tears and, and, and what a character can and can't do. Uh, but, you know, for you personally, I I'm curious to know, like, if you have an issue of plateauing and, and how you overcome that, if you ever notice that yourself, uh, notice that you are plateauing yourself, because that's a very conscious choice, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and yes, it has certainly happened. Um, you know, I guess for me, I, I'm not the type of individual that uh, that likes to sort of play a war of attrition as far as as you know um, myself versus my level of play at that given time. So I, I feel like when I know I've hit a brick wall, um, I kind of step back. Uh, I, I take a break, um, you know, and and try to apply, I guess, that knowledge in other in other facets. So, for instance, um, and this is. This is always a story, I think, for um, just the the online casual. You know, uh, the rank matches are going terrible. You've you've moved from one extremely high rank and you've been demoted to three ranks uh, below that in one sitting. You know, what do you do? Do you just keep playing while you're in autopilot and you're triggered, or do you actually stop and you know do something else? So I think for me, one of the the things I've always done because I still like to keep it you know tied into the subject material. I think it's bad to say you know I'm. Um, I'm doing really bad in Tekken, so I'm just going to quit playing Tekken for an entire month and come back to it later. You know, there's there's some there's some rust to be uh, <laughs> to be eliminated at that point. But um, I think one of the things I always like to do is if I'm hitting a point after a set, uh, I always go back into training mode immediately after that set, and I usually kind of you know review. Uh, maybe like certain sequences of moves I was hit by or a move that I figure, can I punish that? I don't know whether if I should punish that or not. Um, I just kind of review, you know, my matches as a whole and, and that matchup. I think that kind of helps me, you know, put things back into perspective, gives me a break from, you know, just onto the next loss, you know, um, and I can kind of learn something. And, and I think that's actually more or less how I, uh, another way I retain knowledge is, you know, it's fresh in mind. So study it while it's fresh in mind. That's, I think that's one way of getting around that. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Uh, do you find that these processes, or if you haven't applied them before, uh, do you think that applying some of these processes to areas outside of fighting games would be beneficial to you? Or oh. have they been? Oh, for sure. Um, that's, uh, definitely a uh, work model of mine um I, i'm not an individual I, I don't really like putting things off um you know if it's if it's an issue that's bothering me so for instance you know i do a lot of uh, sort of it related work um as far as that that's concerned so uh, problem solving is pretty much a skill set that i'm using every day and i the type of individual where if i can't figure it out um it's something that i'm going to mull over for uh, hours, um, at least 
from my perspective, even like uh, outside for the rest of my shift at work or for the rest of the evening. Um, so I'm an individual that, you know, when things are, are, you know, they present themselves at that moment, take it, grasp it, see if you can solve it at that point. Um, because it's a lot easier when you have all of the information and data that's in mind rather than trying to come back to it later and put all the fragments together. So, mm. Cool. Okay. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, I, I guess the last question is kind of a general question that I always ask is uh, if someone's, you know, trying to learn, I guess, Tekken specifically, and, you know, they come up to you and are like, hey, you know, I, I suck at this game. I want to get better. Uh, you know, what's What's your, like general advice to this person like the one thing that you would tell someone that would have the highest chance of them actually growing as a Tekken player hmm um ooh, yeah that's this is like the broadest question ever because it has like 10 different <laughs> answers there's a <laughs> but I guess the start um competition and and you know practice that's I feel like that's where it all starts so one of the coolest things about, you know, the FGC and even for me um, was, you know, kind of hitting that local scene because I realized as soon as I hit that local scene and was, and was able to, you know, gather with a lot of like-minded individuals on a weekly basis and play, you know, it's uh, the more you're playing that consistently, that level of, of play, the, the better off you'll be, you know, um, I think it definitely starts there. If you're if you're looking for matches and you're struggling, you know, find those local resources, hit them up, uh, play some matches. You know, that's that's where it all starts. But um, even before that, you know, do your homework beforehand. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I think someone mentions, you know, I suck at Tekken, and I'm not sure what you know how I should approach it. Well, you know, there's resources. Take them bit by bit. Learn the combos first, I always feel. Um, and then, you know, learn how to uh, apply your moves and the frame data for each of your moves. Um, you know, I, I, and there's a sequence to it. So just to kind of go back, that's, um, you know, combos, frame data between moves. Um, and then for me, it's it's uh, other system-related items. So like in Tekken, backdashing is big. Um, utilizing your rage drive, understanding how rage drive and rage art works. Um, and then from there, you know, you start to get towards character-specific knowledge, which that's that's always a challenge. That's something I'm trying to figure out right now, you know. Um, if you, exactly. If you know the Yoshimitsu players, please let me know. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, it all starts there. It's, it's, it's a process for sure. Cool. Okay. And then, uh, just the last question is just, uh, if you have anything going on, uh, let the people know. And then if you have like any streams or, or social media where they can reach out to you, uh, feel free to let us know where they can find you on those as well. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, I have a Twitch, uh, fledging Twitch streamer right now. And, uh, and uh, Twitter, you can follow me at Azure Bokeh. That's Bokeh like the the Japanese photography um, method. <laughs> and I know like most people don't actually know that, but uh, it's actually um, definitely the easiest way to uh, to get a hold of me. Um, definitely looking forward to streaming a bit more. And and uh, otherwise, though, you'll see me in the locals around in the Michigan area, and it's always a pleasure to find other players. So. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for us. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, guys, make sure you hit that like button. Um, if you were at Michigan Masters or, you know, you listen to this conversation, let us know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one and more in the future. So thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Seven gold letters. Seven gold letters. Seven gold letters. That's it. Ah! Azure takes Michigan Masters 2018. Did I see a tear in Azure's eye just now?